day. Well, tough news from the economy, as I said. After 10 straight quarters of profit growth, it looks like some of our largest companies are finally feeling the pain from the global economic slowdown. Third quarter earnings are expected to shrink for the first time since just after the recession ended. And as you heard, Humana is the latest company to lower their third quarter outlook. I'm going to bring in Peter Schiff, the CEO of Euro Pacific Capital and author of the new book, The Real Crash. For more on this, Peter, thanks for coming back to the show. Sure, thanks for having me on. So this was the thing that the bulls were really clinging to. Everybody who was trying to be optimistic was talking about this tremendous earnings growth that was continuing on Wall Street. Is the steam finally coming out of that? Well, you know, I, don't, I think the reason that we're not getting the growth that people anticipate is that the economy isn't really recovering. If you look at that fourth quarter GDP number that we got on Friday, or the second quarter rather, uh, it showed 1.5% growth, which is pretty anemic. But if you actually look beneath the surface, in order to get that robust a growth number, the government assumed that inflation was annualizing at seven-tenths of one percent. Now, I don't believe that for a minute. And you're talking about prices are rising. Look at food prices. That There is no way that inflation is that low. And so by underreporting inflation, the government makes it appear as if the economy was growing. If the real rate of inflation is over 3% a year instead of the 0.7% the government claims, we're in contraction right now. Wait, and that would explain the weakness in corporate earnings. Why, why do you back, back up a little bit? Why do you think their inflation number is wrong? Do you think that they're doing that on purpose? Are they not looking at the right things? What is it about that? Yeah, well, I think the methodology that they use to calculate the deflator is wrong. I think it understates inflation. And remember, what GDP does is they take the nominal number and then they deflate it to take inflation out of the picture. But if they're not deflating it enough, uh, then you're not really getting a real number. It's, it's, it's just nominal growth. But yeah. nominal GDP growth isn't going to create jobs. And that's what makes more sense to me. But if you think it's bad now, wait till you see what happens when interest rates rise. Because the only thing that's holding the economy up right now are these artificially low rates. But, you know, the longer they stay low, sure. the higher they're ultimately going to go. You and once you bring interest rates up to market levels, I think it's like, you know, pulling the rug out from under whatever's left of the economy. And I think we're headed for a much bigger decline. But the economy has been weak for a long time and corporations have still managed to have all kinds of profits. That's the reason why Wall Street has been rallying. I mean, that's one of the reasons why everybody wants to tax corporations more. They say they're sitting on the, all this money. They're still doing well. So if they finally, you know, start to peter out, that's bad news for the economy, bad news for the stock market, right? Yeah, well, the, the reason, though, that it's been bad for so long is because we haven't allowed the structural economic imbalances to be corrected. Instead of allowing the necessary short-term pain, we keep artificially stimulating the economy with cheap money, more credit, and we're just trying to perpetuate a bubble economy instead of allowing a genuine economy uh, to be built. And so we're never going to have a real recovery. We're never going to create productive jobs until we understand the source of the problem. And that is too much government, too much regulation, too much money printing, interest rates being yeah, too but if the low, Fed, I agree too much with the first two of those. Hang on, Peter. Borrowing. I agree with the first two for sure. But you want the Fed to step not double in. Down on Peter, them, hang on. But that's what on, Obama has done. And that's what Ben Bernanke Peter. has done when it comes to the failed Do policies. Do you want the Fed to Alan step in and tighten things and up disaster. right now? Wouldn't that be worse? I mean, I agree with you. We don't want as much taxation and regulation without question. But if the Fed comes in and starts to tighten up, that's not going to be good for things right now. Well, in the short run, it will be painful, just like medicine doesn't taste good sometimes. But if it's going to cure you, you don't not take it because you don't like the way it tastes. And yes, when interest rates go up, that's painful for a lot of borrowers, but it's relief for the savers. Nobody bothers to look at the interest rates from the perspective of the lender. There is no return on lending. Saving interest rates are at zero. So we're not going to have savings. And if we're not going to have savings, we're not going to have real capital investment. We're not going to grow an economy. We have to let interest rates go up. And the only reason that the financial institutions are afloat right now is because the Fed is providing money for virtually nothing. And so they can survive uh, making loans, mortgages at three and a half, four percent. But you know, you know they're going to they continue get money to do for that. Nothing from the Fed. So but eventually, what, when Peter. the Fed is forced to raise rates to stop the dollar from imploding, uh, the, the, all these financial institutions are insolvent. Yeah. Okay. So we, we're creating a much bigger problem by numbing the pain so that we don't have to deal with it. But look, look what's happening in Europe. 
They're finally having Peter, to come I'm not sure that you can hear me. I think we, with we, these problems. we've got to wrap we got this the same up and problem. go. I think you can't hear me. Peter, thank you so much for coming on tonight. We appreciate your time, and you made a lot of great points. Sure, absolutely.